Hey guys, welcome to a little short tutorial on how to um, clean out your cookies and just excess web data that you keep stored in your computer that you don't realise is there and could be slowing down um, your computer because that stuff builds up. So um, it's very, very simple. There's two ways to do it. You can either do it through IE or I'm not sure we can do it through Chrome, but we'll do it through IE to begin with. So what you do is just open your browser up and you can just go up to the little cog on the right, top right, and then just go to internet options and you'll get a little screen coming up. Internet options. It's on the first page, general, and you've got browsing history, delete temporary files, history, cookies, save passwords and web form information. And what you can do is you can, because I'm pretty sure default, by default, it's like this. All right. So it's like pretty much telling you, if you want to delete your cookies and temporary files, you need to do it manually. You just come in, hit delete, or do what I do. You tick that box, and what it does is it will delete your browsing. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory. It deletes your browsing history when you exit. Um, pretty sure when you exit... Um, Internet Explorer. As soon as you've turned it off, it, it deletes everything. So, and what predominantly what cookies are are just little bits of metadata saved, so that they saved when you look at a web page for the first time. It stores parts of that, parts of little bits of the data you've you, on that page, bits of code. It stores it on your computer, so the next time, say in a week's time, you go to that same web page, it loads slightly quicker, but it's like milliseconds to the point where you wouldn't even notice the difference. So, and then say you're looking at 50 to 100 web pages a week, different ones, um, all that stuff builds up and it can potentially slow down your, your computer. And what we'll do is in a sec, we'll just apply this. So obviously it's already been done for me, but if you want to just, if you want, you, you can go in and do this manually once a week, if you like, but it just saved it, like, especially people with laptops, you don't want to, if you lose your laptop and then you've been on, you've been doing banking or something on your laptop and it saves your information, something like, you know, it's when you go on certain websites and you go to login and it's already got your login details and all you need to do is hit log in. Yeah, that's good for if you've got a PC at home, desktop, because you know that the only thing that's going to get in the wrong, the only way that's going to get into the wrong hands is if someone robs you, breaks into your house. However, with laptops, you're taking them places, blah, blah, blah. You, you might misplace it. You might leave it somewhere. Um, you might just be on a park bench and you're sitting there and you put it to the side and you get distracted next thing you return when it's gone someone's taken it and you've been on your banking or other websites facebook everything whoever gets that fair enough if you may you might have a pass a part you might have your computer um password locked but there's ways around that people can get around passwords so um my advice is to do this at least once a week or have it do it yourself that's the easiest way. I like to do it like that. Even on, I only do it, this is a desktop I'm on though. I've got it set on this because it just keeps the computer nice and fresh. Um, <clears throat> and it doesn't store heaps of crap. So that was the Internet Explorer way. There's another option, which is pretty much almost the same. It's the same outcome. You can just go to your control panel and go to your network and internet settings and then it's internet options it actually has it right there delete browsing history and cookies and it should take you straight into that same page where we're just on little tab blah blah, blah. same thing okay so pretty easy and if we go to actually if we go to uh say system and security um where is i just want to check free up this space let's have a look at that so if we create select the drives you want to clean up let's hit okay on the c drive for a sec let's just see what it finds we're just going to do a little quick clean up i just want to make sure that there, there shouldn't be many cookies because usually when this is what you do for a whole 
hard drive cleanup. That's not just cookies. That's other stuff. Memory. Anytime you've had a, like you're playing a game and it freezes and there's a crash, it dumps files into like memory files. That's what's in the system error memory dump files. It usually just puts these weird files in some weird location, and that takes up space on your computer. It's unnecessary files. And this might take a few minutes by the looks of it, but what we'll do is we'll pause the video. We'll come back in a sec when this is done. Shouldn't be too long. Welcome back, everyone. And it seems to have done the cleanup files. Oh, it took about a minute or two. Um, so you can see a list here, downloaded program files, there's nothing there. Temporary internet files, there's not much there. Four megabytes. And I I usually take everything in this list here. Oh, it's, oh there's three gigs in my recycle bin. There you go, I haven't been keeping on top of that. Temporary files again, three gigs. You would imagine that's probably crash dumps, stuff like that. You can actually view the files if you want. But the majority of the time... Personally, I'm not a computer expert by far, far from it. Um, I know basic stuff, so um, I don't want people coming on here and commenting and saying I'm doing the wrong thing. This is what I do, and it doesn't seem to do any harm. So this is predominantly a um, basic thing for dummies by a dummy. Because let's face it, I'm, I, I don't know. Most of the time I don't know what I do. Most of the time it's trial and error. I just try stuff and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it does, it does. This works for me. So what it's telling me right now, I'm going to gain six, just under seven gigs of free space by doing this right now. I've ticked them all. So uh, to me, I don't think it's going to do much harm. So let's get rid of them. Show sure you want a bit permanent delete? Yes, please. And now uh, it will proceed to start deleting all the crap that's around and that's seven gigs if you've got like so if you've got um limited space on your hard drive you might only have a small hard drive and it's got windows running in it and it's you've got a lot of media on there it's media heavy it's, it's not a bad thing to do every now and again just go up and clean up your drive and it's so simple as i said um, I'm a dummy, so when it comes to this stuff, so it's just trial and error, just do this stuff, it doesn't really, if, I've never had it mess up my computer by doing this, by ticking all those options that we just ticked, so um, hopefully it doesn't mess up your computer, I don't think it would, because yeah. It's just basic stuff. It's pretty much Windows recommending to delete this stuff. It wouldn't list it on that list, I don't think, Windows, if it was really that important and it would mess up your computer to delete those files. So, but in saying that, it's not, don't assume that this is going to totally fix your computer. If you, you're still having trouble after doing this, and I've got another video my other video about ready boosting um if you try that and that doesn't work as well then you might be looking at potentially a hardware problem and that's when you need to get a, a technical expert to pretty much open up your computer and maybe update it needs new needs an update upgrading ram or your processors just not keeping up with um What you need to do multitasking and all that stuff if you've got several if you've got heaps of stuff opened in the bottom then some computers struggle depending on the, the specs and stuff so let's say it's just if you can notice a difference then fair enough if you don't then then it's time to maybe either upgrade your computer by get taking it to someone but sometimes it's not even worth that so sometimes if you put maybe pay say seven hundred eight hundred dollars for a laptop you're pretty much guaranteeing that you're going to get two two to three years of life out of that and sometimes not not even that 
and that's uh, it's the old saying that you get what you pay for so and then say you pay 700 for a laptop two years later it's worth nothing it's pretty much worth a couple hundred bucks then it starts to slow down starts to play up it's probably not worth getting it fixed because if it's any more than going to cost you any more than a couple hundred bucks to fix it or upgrade it then you may get another year out of it year and a half <clears throat> you're probably looking at more likely you'd probably be better going out and getting a new laptop that will last you another two or three years so but when we maybe paying a little bit extra maybe pay thousand grand fifteen hundred get one with a fair bit of memory in it a really decent processor good hard drive and if you can if it's a if it's a laptop yeah well you want to get you want to get a pretty decent laptop if it's a desktop then you want to look at getting like a solid state drive to run windows off that way it boosts up quick so that has now freed up a bit of space on my computer not that i really needed it but just a little guide to show what is needed now ah, well yeah i've still got 615 gigs of free space but yeah just that might these little things might just help um, preserve your computer's longevity like just give it a little bit more if you can't afford a new computer but you really need it it just gives it a little potentially a little kick up the bum just to give it a little bit more life so yeah um, any comments any um, questions don't feel free just to leave a comment don't forget to hit the like button if this um, video helped you in any way and um, We'll see you in the next one and thanks for watching. See ya.